Welcome to episode 44. Welcome to episode 44 of the Dealers Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And today, we get a little bit deep. Fall is here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell, brand new shoes, walk and lose, climb the fence, books and pens, I can tell that we are gonna be friends. This podcast today, this episode is, I think, different than anyone we've ever done in the sense that we talk a lot about the relational, emotional side of what makes people tick, and we tie that back to what makes people tick in business, and there's nobody better, I don't think, to to blend these two worlds than my new friend, AJ Amex. I think you are going to be really impressed and I think moved to make some positive change, uh, whether you're a leader in business or an entrepreneur, or honestly, in your other relationships in life, we get kind of deep on the things that really drive us below the surface of just like performance or drive us, you know, just below the surface of wanting to do a good job or wanting other people to listen to us as a leader and all these motivations. Um, we kind of get under that surface a layer, two layers. We probably at some points get like three layers under And there's a lot of information in the podcast. We're going to produce um, a cheat sheet, if you will, because AJ gave us so many helpful tools that you kind of, you know, the most effective part of a map is the you are here section. And if you can look at a map, it could be have all the right information on the map, where you need to go, where you are, you know, all the hazards in between and how you navigate it. All that can be there. But unless you have the you are here indicator on the map it's completely useless so i think aj what he did was in a lot of sense give us the map so that we can begin to understand where we are on it so then we can know what we need to do to move forward so i hope you enjoy this podcast there's so much content there um there's so many good points as it unfolds it doesn't stop like new points keep coming out through the podcast and i know something is going to connect with you and in the spirit of the podcast and the community, just so we can make meaningful steps forward. So I hope that this connects with you in a way that helps you meaningfully take a step forward, be more clear, have more clarity in business and in life, cut through that fog. Here's the podcast. AJ, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Um, Just welcome. Thanks for giving some of your time to me and the Dealers Compressed community. Dude, you're most welcome. Thanks for having me. I know it sounds like I'm in a bathroom. It's actually this little phone booth that we have here at the office. The rooms were taken today. So, uh, you know, they're just going to have a little bathroom audio kind of coming through the microphone today. This is where we insert like a toilet (laughs) flushing sound effect. Like, yeah, right. (laughs) That's awesome. So um, for for our listeners who haven't heard of you, why don't you give us, you know, the Cliff's Notes on what you're about and uh, what you do as a professional, as a person? Yeah, so I'm a life and business coach, man, for high producers. And so what we do is help them have uh, more money, time, and freedom. I'm pretty sure every leader wants more money and more time and more freedom. The way it's a little bit different is I very have a very holistic hybrid approach where I, I love the game of business and expertise and influence, but I also understand that the real work usually comes from the deep work, which is the kind of the combination between the way that our see, we see ourselves and also the way that we feel about ourselves. And um, that's a lot of the deep work that we do with people. And when we do that deep work, it carries over into the game of business and they're able to produce results uh, a lot easier without a lot of stress, a lot of struggle, without all the hustle and grind. That I love that principle. I mean, I always say it's like, it's one person, you know, yes. from, it's not like this is the business me and this is the home me, this yep. is the personal passion me. Um, and when we, I think that when we try to separate those things, you know, we got to separate work from home life. I think the second we try to separate those things, it becomes more work, honestly, because now we're trying to play on all these different fields and it takes energy and time to let's keep this line here and let's have another line there. So I couldn't be more aligned with your message and uh, awesome. just what you just said. So you, you tell us that this is what you're doing now and this is what you're successful yeah. at. Like, give us like the 60 second, like how the heck did you get there? Like you didn't start there. Like most people listening to this podcast, most of us sure. never thought like, Hey, I'm going to be right here in 10 years from now. Like it no. doesn't happen that way. So you have a kind of an interesting journey. Why don't you tell us a little about it? Dude, I went from being a professional musician in a Christian rock band where we had record offers in a 38 tour bus to that completely collapsing and going, burning to the ground, and I lost everything except my health, and I had a decision 
which is do I build another band with different guys or do I do something else? And thankfully, I chose something else. And I said, I, I love the game of marketing. I love the game of business. And at that time, 2009, 2010, 2011, social media was like bubbling uh, into the game yep. of business. And oh, yeah. so I saw that opportunity. And so I jumped on that wave, dude, and wrote it as far as I could and hopped in the game of social media, built a social media marketing um, management company for brick and mortars, ended up becoming known as the Twitter rock star. And I built that brand where I taught at Creative Live. It's kind of the pinnacle of teaching in the game of marketing for creatives. And then from there, I burnt out and I hired my first mentor, which was Garrett J. White in 2012. And he asked me a question, which was, hey, dude, why don't you uh, take everything that you're doing? And why don't you try teaching? And I was like, dude, that's a brilliant idea. I think <laughs> I'd like that. And so I hosted my first live event. I think I had like 10 people there, sold my first coaching off the back end of that event. And then I never looked back. And this has been a constant up leveling and um this kind of expansion and evolution as I expand and evolve and go to the next peak in my life and be able to reach back, package that up, and then give it to humanity and help them completely rise up together. And I kind of think that's kind of the whole point of being a human. Yeah, I, I agree. I love the – so what what did you play? Patrick, the producer of the show, and me, we have like, what do you think he played? So what did you play? I played a guitar, rhythm guitar. You know, I was, I was thinking it could be a drummer, but you kind of have the like – kind of more of a front man personality. So I don't know, Pat, well, Patrick, what was your guess? I guessed acoustic. He guessed acoustic. Like, we did do some acoustic too. sets. So technically uh, he's this right. This means you were more right than me. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to edit that out. So, talking about the people side, you know, a band is very interactive. Um, yes. You know, kind of business really does bond with that, especially when you're talking about entrepreneurship and training and yeah. bringing people forward in their, you know, se in internal self and their thoughts and their feelings and how to apply those things. Um, what else, what else are you like? What else in life drives you? I guess if you give me the things that are the driving force in your life or that are important to you, like what would be like the top three? Ah, oh, man, that's a great question. Nobody's really asked me that question. Yes. I think dude, my, the driving force of my life and it probably brings me the most stress, but it really is a driving force. If I'm honest, it's excellence. Mm -hmm. Like I'm obsessed with it. And it's not just like in the game of business. Like I want to be an excellent husband, whatever that looks like. And I don't yeah. think there's ever an end point um, yeah. to that game. It's just mm -hmm. like up leveling and pulling back layers to yeah. be able to have more presence for my wife and to have more masculine certainty for my wife. But at yep. the same time to have more of that childlike connection and adventurous spirit um, with my wife. But doing the same thing as now, you know, that we have a, a daughter, you know, being that that father, which is a constant up leveling experience, <laughs> um, having more fun rather than just being the staunchy, grumpy old white man, but being able to have fun even when I'm 90 or 100. Um, to me, it's excellence, man, across all five levels. Uh, we have a framework called Thrive Five, which is faith, family, fitness, finance, and fun. Mm -hmm. And if you tackle life in that order, mm -hmm. it usually works out for you. Um, and you actually end up making more money, actually, when you put the first three, the faith, Interesting family, fitness, byproduct, huh? Interesting yeah. byproduct, for sure. I think a lot of the people that would, would watch this podcast at some point in the future and the audience that we have now um, – I think that most of them would probably fall into several of those buckets being sure. super important. Like a lot of them are family people, our demographic, you know, does skew uh, a little bit older in the sense of like marriage age or family age. And most of our audience also would be kind of wrestling through this stage of their life where there is, I guess, a baseline, like you said, this desire for excellence. And, you know, we see the hashtag better every day. Sure. Um, and I think that that's, you know, it's, it, it can be a little trendy because it's a hashtag, I guess. But really, the, the underlying the underlying principle of it is is something very good, right? It's this desire to say, I've never arrived, right? Yeah. But, but being on the path is the goal. It is for what's sure. fulfilling. It is what kind of makes all of life better for, you know, whether it's our spouse, our family, um, our colleagues, you know, or even like our own improvement and awareness and, and growth. You know, I'm really interested in your perspective because we talk about dealership stuff and business stuff, but yeah. you and I haven't really discussed this. Um, sure. What do you see as like one of the biggest roadblocks that you're seeing pop up in your coaching and your involvement with people in business? Like what's the thing that always seems to bubble to the top that you find yourself addressing in your, your coaching? Man, it's been a lot of actually deep emotional work, believe it or not. People I believe are it. Totally <laughs> repressing, 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 repressing and, and pretending things don't 
aren't there. You know, one of my greatest gifts is helping people align with the truth. I always tell people, I'll take you into the fire. Sometimes it's beautiful and sometimes it's chaotic, but I'll take you into the fire and let the fire refine you if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of people, and I would think for a lot of people who own dealerships, you know, we started talking about, hey, I want to get the dealership. I want to get the dealership. I want to get my employees going. But if they're out of alignment in their marriage, they have guilt and shame in their marriage. They have guilt and shame in their bodies. Mm-hmm. And you're still going, taking that physical body into the game of business. It's the same that person. frequency of who you are as a man or as a woman is still coming through you yep. when you're having that conversation with somebody. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, you know, it's going to totally, totally destroy that that whole piece of business. Or they just knocked on the door and said, hey, you're preaching too much. You need to quiet down. <laughs> the space totally drives me freaking insane. It makes me want to like burn the whole place. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I'm not, when you said you might, this might surprise you, frankly, I'm not surprised. Um, and I think HR is kind of a spot in a segment in business where people get into HR because they care about people, right? Yeah. They don't, they don't care about like, you usually have two really distinct parts of a business. The HR department is designed and focused on keeping the people healthy and safe and so that they can perform well. And then the CFO and the operations director, they're tasked with, you know, taking care of the business side. And there they're two are different things that have to work together in order to get a good output. So it doesn't surprise me, I guess, when you say, start out, let's start, what can we improve? And you always end up in this place where it's like, well, let's get yourself straight first. So then you can perform well. Um, if, if people don't do that, like, so if some of our viewers right now, they're dealing with some, you know, stress in their personal life or home or some shame, as you, you know, you said, what what's something real practical? Like, what's a question we can ask ourselves to, to kind of decipher, like, if I'm struggling, you know, what, what's, what's a good first step? I think it, the, the best first step is understanding the drama triangle, which was created by a psychologist back in 1968. And so there's three archetypes, usually where people are hemorrhaging power. This could be happening in HR, this could be happening in the family, it could be happening in any relationship that we have, whether it's a close relationship or with this employee, whatever, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. So there's the hero, there's the villain and the victim. And so the moment we can become aware that we're either being the hero, the hero who's trying to come in and save someone, right? Mm -hmm. We have an employee that we really like, but maybe they've been showing up late. They're not doing their job. They're not honoring their agreements, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Loyalty, loyalty. They're going to come around. They're coming to come around. Well, Mm -hmm. eventually, we're, we're essentially taking on a hero archetype. And anytime we take on a hero, a villain, or a victim, we attract the other two archetypes. And as a result, we stay in drama right? So the whole game of life is to try to stay out of drama as much as possible, stay up and love. Now, love isn't just like, hey, I love you. You're so great. Love is just like, hey, we're going to expand and grow together. And we're going to walk over here because one plus one in the game of relationships equals 11, (laughs) not two. If it's two, (laughs) it's codependency. And that relationship (laughs) will end up in drama. So one plus one actually equals 11 in relationships. So for being the hero, then we have to understand, hmm, I'm heroing this person. So uh, we created a framework called the Creator's Compass, which is like, well, how do we get out of drama? We'll learn how to become like the, the caring respecter where I can care about you as a human being. I can also hold space for you to rise to your greatness and I'm gonna respect your decision, whether that means you're going to abide by a new agreement and we'll, we'll create that dialogue to have that exchange. And if we can, again, one plus one equals 11, go in the same direction, mm-hmm. we shall continue. If not, you're free to walk out the door and that's your choice. And that's okay. It, it's a healthy right? bound it's a healthy boundary. Yes. So, now so, the other place is the victim. If yep. we the man So first the like, first person in the triangle, like try so we got the, the triangle, we got a hero, now we're yep. talking about the victim. Exactly. Yep. The victim is all about the poor me stories. How oftentimes is a manager or a business owner like, Man, poor me, I just wish that employee would do this or that. Poor me, poor me, poor me. Mm-hmm. Well, that employee is usually going to play that villain where they're, that's kind of like the F you stories, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so if we can become aware that, hmm, I'm showing up as a victim here, well, then we can learn how to become uh, the vulnerable problem solver. This is where most men, women too, but definitely most men in my experience, they don't mm-hmm. want to be vulnerable. They want to put on this facade like they have everything together. Mm-hmm. Yet Jesus talks about this concept, which is the meek shall inherit the earth. I believe that means those of us who are willing to be vulnerable have the most influence. Mm-hmm. My personal experience is 
the more vulnerable I get with people, the more I'm actually able to lead them. And the deeper of connection that I can have with that person, mm-hmm. and I actually am able to hold them up and help them rise up to this game of love. Well, you again, know, whether they stay or don't stay, it doesn't matter. You know, to that point, I think that it's been my experience too that it's very difficult for someone to self-identify as a victim, right? Because when you identify as a victim, you give up your power, a sense. Because, oh, if I'm a victim, that means I don't have power in the situation. But acknowledging and understanding where you're fitting, that's really the first step of having some power in the situation. And and what you talk about, you know, the meek and the vulnerability, increasing your ability to lead. You know, as I think about that, like vulnerability, being willing to be vulnerable is almost, or maybe it is, it's like, it's kind of a sign of the ultimate security because I'm willing to exploit this vulnerability because I know that I'm bigger than it. And I think people, people trust that. Like, this is interesting as you're talking through these things, like just hundreds of scenarios over over my last 17 years in business are going through my mind. And I already, when you say the triangle, I already know like how I typically identify and where, where my relationships tend to break down. Like the hero tends to be codependent with a victim because they need each other. And okay. So this is, this is amazing. So we got hero, we got victim. What's the other one? So the villain is that F you story. So a lot of leaders, we become a victim in our minds for about two seconds. And then we're like, F you, what? Get out of my office. Get yeah. out of here. You're late. You're out. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, well, if I can become aware that I'm taking on that archetype, mm-hmm. well, then how do I get back into a place of what I'd call core power? Mm-hmm. Well, it's learning how to have empathy and yet be the aggressor the empathetic aggressor so a person comes in is like hey man i'm sorry i'm a little late you know the car broke there's a piece of us that says dude i told you here about eight like come on but maybe a better role would be like dude i get it you know i mean life's tough it throws curveballs at you and i totally understand man my car's broke down on me before but here's the thing dude we run a business and you got to hear be here by eight o'clock mm-hmm. so like this is the last time the next time dude you're done mm-hmm you can still have empathy, so you're meeting that person, mm-hmm. but you're also being aggressor where it's a line in the sand if this is the agreement mm-hmm. that you, you can have. Mm-hmm. And if there aren't those agreements in place, then it's time to create those agreements with the employees, the wife, the spouse, the partner, what, who's ever in your core influence where you're hemorrhaging that core power where we're playing these three roles. Mm-hmm. So the way to stay out of those is becoming aware I'm the hero. Mm-hmm. If I'm becoming the hero, let me be the caring respecter. If I can play that archetype, then I can stay in love. I can stay in power. If I'm aware that I'm becoming the victim, then how do I become the vulnerable problem solver? So I'm saying, hey, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling angry. Whatever I'm feeling, this is the inarguable truth. You cannot argue how I feel. Yep. I'm not saying you make me the feel, feel this way because the truth is nobody makes you feel Makes you feel anyway, you right. Feel that way. You yes. choose to feel that way. I, <laughs> I choose to feel angry. I choose to feel sadness. I choose to fear fearful. This is mm-hmm. what I choose. Mm-hmm. The meaning that I attach to that's a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm. But if I can say, hey, this is me being vulnerable. It's the way I feel. But I'm also getting into, hmm, how could we solve this problem? Mm -hmm. If I have some ideas, I can speak those. If I don't, then I could just ask you, hey, how could you think you and I could work together to make sure you're never late again? Yeah. And then we can open up dialogue. And then if I'm becoming that that, uh, villain, then it's learning how to become that empathetic aggressor. Every one thing that you just brought up, like every one component needs its own hour long podcast. And it's it's getting me going because I I think about this type of thing much more than I think about profit loss statements, balance sheets and all and policy. Although in order to have a business, you need those other things. But this really is the driver because it's the drive like business is human interaction. It's all there is to it. And. I've just seen people, myself included, you know, get tripped up over the human side of business. And those who navigate the human element best are the ones that do the best. Um, And I'm not talking about, I mean, I guess you could look at like the massive, you know, things like, you know, look at like a Steve Jobs who was like a total D bag to work with as far as you hear. Right. But he kind of compensated for that with just vision and this amazing thing that he was giving opportunities, giving other people. But I would say. For the majority of people, the leaders that are going to accomplish something are the ones that understand and really do care about the person. Drawing the line, 
you know, having an agreement, as you called it, an agreement. I don't, I don't think you're you're referring to like a written contract. Sometimes no, no, no. it needs to be on paper, but sometimes, sure. Sure. you know, sure. Sure. like sure. because the the purpose, like I always say, a purpose of a contract is just so both parties are clear. Like if yes. you can you can get your way out of any contract, but you don't need the contract if everyone has integrity in in the relationship. But it really is an exercise. And like, hey, just so we're clear. Right. And whether that's in a relationship with a spouse or with, you know, a, a team member where you're saying sure. like, hey, we come in at eight. Right. So I understand this happened. That's great. Life happens. But if you can't honor this contract, then you can't be a part of this team or sure. then. Exactly. Um, but it's a difference, Paul, between expectations versus agreements. Expectations will always create drama. Agreements. You will not have any drama. Because Interesting. When, when I come and if you and I have an agreement, Paul, I don't have to say, blah, 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 blah. I can say, hey, Paul, remember that agreement we had? You're like, oh, yeah. Remember when you agreed to da, da, da? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not doing that. I, now I'm not blaming or shaming you at all. I can hold you accountable to the agreement. But if there's these unspoken expectations, mm -hmm. I'm back in drama. Yep. Hemorrhage and power. You hate me. I hate you. No yep. co-creative win-win. As a result, life is being sucked out of me. Your life is being sucked out of you. Neither one of us enjoy working with none another. So it's becoming aware of, am I operating based upon expectations? Mm -hmm. Or have I made the decision and I have the clear understanding how to switch my uh, relationship and operate off of clear spoken agreements? And again, mm -hmm. like you said, this isn't written things. Mm -hmm. These, this is about setting clear agreements mm -hmm. and then honoring those agreements and holding people accountable to those agreements. That, my friend, is called leadership. Like, <laughs> seek to understand rather than seek to fix. To see someone as through a lens that they need to be fixed means that at their soul, you see that they're broken. So rather than seeing them through a lens that you need to fix them, Yep. Hold space and genuinely try to understand them and then create clear spoken agreements. You know, this is that point right there. I think, you know, so my wife and I have been married for almost 17 years and, you know, we went through, you know, a big rough spot over a few years when we decided to go to therapy. And it, it really that process literally changed who I am as a person in a good way. It obviously changed our relationship and our marriage. But I think that a lot of times what happens um, and this probably skews heavy mail. It's like one of those stereotypes, like when, you know, a woman communicates something or a wife communicates something to a husband or a woman to a man in a romantic relationship, like he's listening to say, how can I fix this problem? Yep. Right. And that's so what he gives back is advice. And most times, guys, she doesn't want advice. She just wants to know that you understand. And it's interesting to see how that that kind of does jump over to business relationship, not just male, female, but it's, I think it's just a natural male tell tendency. You're giving me information in order that I will process said information and then give you the answer back. Now, taking this deeper, Paul, it's one thing to seek to understand from the mental mindset game. Yep. It's another thing to seek to understand from your soul because women, and I would be willing to bet men definitely in this day, day and age are very intuitive. Mm -hmm. So if you come at me with the mental construct, I'm going to be like, you don't seek to understand me. You say that you do, but yeah. what I feel from you is totally different. Trying to you're fit me trying in. trying to seek to understand me to keep me from arguing, but you're not here being present, holding space to genuinely understand me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm saying this is gray space between understanding how to operate from a mindset, a way that we think, mm -hmm. but also the deeper part of this game is understanding how to do the deeper work where you're actually seeking to understand from the depths of your soul so they can feel your willingness to actually seek to understand them. That is, like I said, we could go for an hour just on that. We're going to have to do this again. Awesome. And we're going to have to, we'll narrow a topic down so that we can do that. And then maybe if we just end up doing it on Instagram or whatever and kind of do these things um, to help. One of the things, so I like to try to give a practical tool if I can sure. um, in the podcast. I think one practical tool along with the lines of what you just said, I'm sure you're familiar with this, is active listening, right? So active listening, I use this a lot in my relationship with my wife or has. It's really helped us get through these emotional moments in the sense that to understand what somebody's saying, not just fit them into a construct. I have an issue and I say to AJ, hey, this is what I'm thinking about this. Yeah. And what he hears typically or in a relationship when there's emotions involved, you're going to hear what they said through your mental construct and you're going to typically formulate a variation 
how it fits your model. So then what AJ says back to me is like, what I hear you saying is, and then states it back to me in his own words, right? Not in a way that's repeating what I said. And then I have the chance to say, I can either say, that's what I mean, or I have a chance to say, no, actually, let me give you some more clarity on that and give more definition. I think that that one step has really helped a lot of these roadblocks move out of the way because I, for in my wife's situation and I, um, I wish she was here. She could probably chime in and give you more truth than I am. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying. Um, is that she would, she would say and she would tell you like, most times I don't hear exactly what she's feeling. Yeah. I hear words, I make them fit into what I, I think is right, and then we hear them back. So active listening, we'll try to post up a link or something that also gives you a little bit of a resource there. Um, so there's, there's three levels of active listening. There's facts, feelings, and values. Nothing ever get resolved from the facts levels because the yep. facts that I see are right for me and the facts for them are right for them. And yep. so as long as we communicate on facts, we're both right, and we just go to go to war seeing who's the bigger victim. Right. So if we can get <laughs> curious and figuring out, well, what are the feelings? Well, and again, that's a little bit deeper of truth. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, I feel this way. Well, I feel this way. Well, we could still go to war. If I can get into a deeper, genuine state of curiosity and figure out, well, what are the values? Mm -hmm. Usually I can get to my wife's value, which is she just wants to have connection. Yep. So anytime we're arguing, I can be like, hey, babe, I hear what you're saying. Uh, do you just want like connection? Because that's what I want. I really don't want to argue right now. It's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, how about we skip the arguing part and come over and get a hug? It doesn't work all the time. Yep. It works of course. About 70% of the time. But it's really understanding the facts, filling values, and learning how to communicate at the values. That's yeah. where things take place. And, and for those listening, it's not just about your relationship with your significant other. This is totally what's about human beings. Even mm -hmm. in the game of business, they're mm -hmm. like, fact, 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 mm -hmm. fact, fact, fact. You can be like, hmm. What are they, what is their really deep value? And sometimes if you don't know, you're like, hey, I hear what you're saying here and you could mirror that back. Yeah. What's really going on? Like what value of yours do you feel like is being violated? And that may be even a pattern interrupt where they're like, what? Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know? snaps out of it. Yeah. Have a deeper communication right then and there. Man, th you have like a tool for like every one of these things, which is amazing because unless you have a deployable thing, right, it's just good advice. Um that's all the time we have today, but awesome. can you just tell the audience, what is the sure. best way to kind of like dive into your world, mm -hmm. see what you've created, maybe connect with you if they feel like that you might be able to help with coaching or business or in life? What, what's the best way? Um, so if you guys go to ajamyx.com, so it's ajamyx.com slash we'll audiobook, okay. um, slash audiobook, you guys, there's a, a, a book called Mindset's Not Enough. It's an hour and a half long. It'll totally radically fundamentally help you completely shift your your mindset, your emotionality just around you as a human being and how to interact with other people. A lot of people have breakthroughs with that. The other place to connect with me is just um, ajamix.com, my website. There's a ton of resources there. But also, to be honest, I like being a human, so just connect with me on Facebook. It's just facebook.com slash ajamix. Very simple. Shoot me a private message. Send me a friend request, and let's just dialogue. I love conversing uh, with amazing people. There you have it. We'll link all that up below. Also, I'm going to get my team working and see if we can come up with a worksheet to kind of uh, distill awesome. down some of the things we talked about so we can point people in the right direction. I'll make sure that, that you sign off on it so that uh, it's accurate to what we talked about. And man, thank you so much. I think this is the beginning of a really good relationship moving awesome. forward. So. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, AJ. So what did I tell you? Is your mind blown yet? Um, I know that I'm going to be thinking about this interview for a while and it's not going to be the last time I engage this stuff. A lot of it is stuff that I engage anyway. So I hope you found some value in it. I know there's deep things, but I think those who are willing to engage the deep things are going to be the ones that are the most successful in life because you can't separate business and personal. It's all the same person. And the clarity in that situation is understanding it's all the same person. Healthy people make healthy business and healthy business is good for everybody in the business. It, it benefits the employees and benefits you. It benefits your home life. It benefits your livelihood and your dreams and goals. All I'm saying with all that rambling is that it's all connected. That's the clarity. So I hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening. Feel free to connect on any of the other platforms that are listed below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to get some feedback and love to field any questions you might have. As usual, Dealers Compressed Community something that I am just insanely grateful for.
you sing Tonight I'll dream while I'm in bed When silly thoughts go through my head About the bugs and alphabet When I wake tomorrow I'll bet That you and I will walk together again I can tell that we are gonna be friends 